What is up YouTube? You are watching The True Show with me, your host The Truth. And today I'm doing a video on Tom Clancy's The Division. We haven't done a video on The Division for a while. The last one we did was for 1.7, but we're doing our one on 1.8. Eight. We're going to be bringing you information about Rogue 2.0, information about the resistance mode, and information about big things that are coming up. We'll do the Rogue mode second, all the changes to Rogue, and we'll do that second. What we're going to do first is we're going to tell you the major events that are coming up within the next couple of weeks. So the first thing I should be telling you is about the next global event, which is called Assault. We'll be getting to put up on the 3rd of October. So that's when the next global event's coming up, guys. Uh, crap. If you keep... If you play the PTS or you know someone who played the PTS, they will know how the assault mode works. If you didn't, that's what it's going to be. Go and look into it and see how the assault mode works. A week before the global event goes up, the PTS for 1.8 is getting put up. So the PTS is going to be running one week before that. There is a new ban wave coming, guys. So if you've been using the RPM glitch, the gear mod glitch, any sort of glitch that's been getting raped, essentially, then you're going to get banned. Um, what they're saying is they're going to be planning on banning around 50 to 75% of the players. That's just a ballpark figure. I can't tell you whether that's actually true or not. But that's what we've been told. So, on Tuesday the 19th of September, we're going to be getting update 1.71, which is going to remove the RPM glitch and the gear mod glitch from the game. Nobody's going to be able to use them anymore. So, that's the latest updates on that. Let's get straight in to the Rogue 2.0. I am so excited about Rogue 2.0. You could not believe just the changes they're doing. So... One of the biggest changes that they're making to Rogue 2.0 is how you go Rogue. And I think this is going to be pretty amazing for a lot of people. In order to go Rogue, you can't simply run up to someone and shoot them and go Rogue. doesn't work like that anymore. What you're going to have to do is toggle Rogue mode on. Okay? Now, what essentially that is, is you have to hold up on your directional pad and you'll go into Rogue mode. And then you'll be rogue and everyone around you knows you're rogue and that you're going rogue. Bing, bang, bosh. So, you can't just shoot random people or blow them up or stab them in the back like a lot of people do. Just sneak up behind people and just waste them. You know, you have to toggle your rogue modes on before you start attacking people. So, it gives people who aren't rogue time to react. Um. I keep saying aim, um, and I, I'm, like, really aware that I keep doing it. Can't help it, so I'm sorry. The next thing is how the rogue system's going to work. Now, usually when you get to Manhunt, you get, like, 240 seconds to run it off. And once you run the time down, you fall out of Manhunt, Manhunt's over, you win. That's not the case anymore. Once you get to Manhunt, there is no timer. What will happen is Isaac will come to you over the radio and give you a waypoint. As a man, as manhunt, you have to go to the waypoint and basically complete a mission in order to get rid of your rogue. Right? With this new rogue change comes new rogue rewards. Now, you'll get the original rewards, like your XP, your Dark Zone XP, and your Dark Zone money, and stuff like that. But what else you get now is called manhunt caches. Now, you'll get one manhunt cache for every rank of rogue. So, if you're a level 5 manhunt, you get five manhunt caches. Yeah? That's how it works. Um, but if, you know, you can't get them out, it's just the way it is. Just the fact that people can't run their rogues down anymore is just really exciting to me. I can't wait to see how many people complain about that. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, the next thing is that when... When a rogue, when a team of rogues gets the alert to go to a certain place, every person who is non-rogue in the dark zone will also get that alert and the place to go to. What this is going to do is it's going to give people who aren't rogue an incentive to go and stop people. That incentive being bounty caches. 
Now, bounty caches were pretty much and he will give you the same gear that manhunt caches give you. Okay, but you won't get as many. You get one per rogue agent you kill. So say you kill one rogue agent, you get one rogue. You get one bounty hunter cache. You kill four rogue agents, you get four bounty hunter caches. Um it's gonna be your mission if you're not rogue to stop the rogues from getting out. So, I mean, personally for me, that's going to make a lot of people who like to go into the dark zone and go rogue really pissed off. Because you can't run your rogue down anymore. And given the incentive of people to stop you from going rogue, you go to the place where you're going to close your rogue out, mate. And I'm telling you, you're going to have a bloody entire server waiting for you. So now this is where not going rogue pays off. If, say, you're in a team of four, you're fighting a team of manhunt rogues. If another team shows up and kills those rogues, don't worry. you They don't take the loot. If you're actively fighting the rogues as well, when that team kills them, you also get the caches for it. So it gives more of an incentive to, you know, help each other out. But they, in a way, poses a, pro a lot of players that say, oh, well, what about accidentally going rogue, you know, when players run in front of you? Well, guys, friendly fire has been removed. You can no longer be shooting at a rogue. Someone accidentally runs in front of you. You can shoot them all you want. You can stand there all day and shoot on rogues. Unless you've toggled rogue mode, you'll never go rogue. So, friendly fire and accidental rogues are getting completely removed. They are gone. Thank God. Same for grenades. You throw a grenade at a rogue and a non-rogue's in the area. It blows up. You're not going to go rogue, guys. You actually have to toggle the rogue, uh, that mode. Which also brings us back to why manhunt's getting changed so much. So, one of the biggest con one of the biggest problems was, like, you kill a rogue. He was in a team of four. And then he'd go back to the checkpoint. And then he'd come out to the checkpoint. And then run over to his mates and start body blocking. So every time you shot at them, you get in the way, you go rogue, other people are turn on you. Well, guess what? If your team is now rogue, what of your team dies and goes back to the checkpoint? That player can come out of the checkpoint in a non-rogue situation, but as soon as he gets to within a certain distance of his team who are rogue, he immediately goes rogue, which means he can't do the body block anymore. Body blocking has been removed guys there's no more body blocking of rogues now they could essentially come out drop out of the team they're in and then just stand there in between you and the rogue but because friendly fires off i mean their rogue mate simply just gonna kill them i mean you might not be able to shoot the rogue but with his mate in the way the rogue's never going to be able to shoot you so you know that's just the way it works <laughs> um when going rogue, it, there's going to be no extra rewards for the amount of players you kill. So, say you go manhunt, and after going manhunt, you kill 75 players. You're not going to get any better gear than you got for just going to manhunt 5 and then getting into the manhunt. You're just going to get the exam, exact same gear. I mean, you could go around the dark zone, because manhunt has no chance of switching off now unless you complete the mission. Uh, there's no timer, so you could essentially go manhunt and then just bop around the dark zone, cause a murder with everybody, but eventually you're going to get killed. You're not going to get anything for it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, and for those of you who actually like going into the dark zone, guys, keep hold of your Banshee gear sets, and that's all I'm going to say about it. If you've got a Banshee gear set or you just pick up Banshee gear, keep hold of it. It's going to be really useful. So that's all we know about Rogue 2.0. There's a lot more about Rogue 2.0 you might be able to find out. But, you know, that's what we clipped over when we watched the State of the Game video. You could just go and watch that, guys, and that'll give you more information than we have. Um, but what we're going to talk about now is Resistance Mode. I'm going to talk about how it works. So Resistance Mode is the new, essentially, Horde Mode, what we're going to get. Um, your character's going to be level 30 to play it. You're going to get three separate areas. One 
the aircraft carrier two called pier 93 and the third one's going to be called the powerhouse and the way they're going to work is that you're going to be able to go into them from the open world the same way that you go into an incursion or something like that they're going to be on the map you go to them you trigger them you go in that's how they're going to work uh, they're going to be endless waves of enemies and the higher your wave the more difficult they are so you'll get like enemies who start at hard okay or normal and then as you go up through the waves the enemies get tougher and tougher eventually they'll get to heroic level you know and you've got to do that um, you get bosses every five waves and with the bosses especially it's going to be very unique because you're going to be able to get named bosses bosses from the open world you're going to be able to get bosses from the missions such as Larray Barrett who will appear and when you kill those bosses they will drop their unique gear so if you kill Larray Barrett in resistance there's a chance she's going to drop Barrett's bulletproof vest one of the exotic items she'll like she'll drop her unique gear if you kill her in resistance so you don't have to go to the missions and do it in the missions if you come across it in resistance you've got a, the same chance of getting the gear as you would if you're fighting it in a mission um you're gonna get caches from resistance mode now the caches are going to be unique as well because they're going to be tier based now it's going to be t you're going to have essentially level one tier caches from wave one to ten okay now every ten waves the level of cash goes up so when you get to wave 10 to 20 you're going to get tier 2 caches and so on and so forth and they go so that happens every 10 waves they increase until it gets to tier 5 caches tier 5 caches are going to have the best gear so you know it's going to be get to level 50 in order to get the best gear guys kill this dude with the shield i have to ah oh, i didn't anyway so yeah there's going to be tier fives and um, once you get to level 50 as well on it enemies are going to be getting buffs so you're going to find enemies are going to be dropping shock turrets and enemies are going to be throwing specialist grenades and they'll get flame bullets and explosive bullets and basically they start getting all the bloody division agent gear buffs as it's going along they just get tougher and tougher so you know that looks brilliant um it's going to be randomly generated and sort it's going to be sort of the same but random like the waves are going to be the same the amount of enemies and stuff like that but what i'll change is like maybe the way the enemies attack you maybe the buffs that they've got will change or the gear that they're using will change maybe the enemies will change completely um, the bosses in the boss waves will change every time around. But yeah, you know, it, it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. And considering that it's PvE, it's going to be amazing for PvE players. They've said that you can play it solo and you can play it as part of a team. The way it's going to work is that it's going to be one life to live. So if you're in a team, you're going to be wanting to keep your team alive. You're not going to be wanting them to die. If you go in solo, you die. You die. It's back to wave one. So you've got one chance uh, to do it. I mean, I'm not talking like one chance completely. You get one chance and then if you die, you've got to go back to the beginning. Um, so that's everything we know about the resistance mode. Well, actually, one more thing about the resistance mode. There's going to be turrets in the resistance mode. And these turrets are going to be like the way they are in last stand, but unique. Because you're going to be able to upgrade these turrets. So you'll be able to switch a turret on and then upgrade it with, say flame bullets or shock bullets or you're going to be able to activate a pulse turret and be able to upgrade that with critical hit damage and critical hit chance and so on and so forth now whether that's going to carry over onto like the base turrets in last stand i don't think it will you know they might do it eventually but i really don't see it happening but you know only time will tell um and now finally the last thing we've got our information on is new stuff coming into the game like we said before the banshee gear set is getting a complete redo getting remade completely all its skills and stuff so 
you know, and it's supposed to going to be really, really good. So if you're getting Banshee gear, keep hold of it. And um, there's going to be four new, four new exotic weapons. One of them's going to be an LMG. You're going to have two snipers and one SMG. Now the SMG in particular is going to be an S an MPS, and it's going to be based on the Sig Sauer. So. That's one of the new exotic weapons. We don't know what the other weapons are going to be based on, but we know that they're definitely two snipers, an LMG, and one SMG are going to be the new exotic weapons being brought into the game. So there's something for you to go out and get and be excited for, especially if you're an SMG person or a sniper. Lots of decent gear. So I guess that's it, guys. That's everything we've learnt. I mean, I've got a lot of writing in front of me, all the notes that I took from everything we learned i mean there's probably more in there that i haven't mentioned but you know if you've got anything you want to know about it specifically just leave a comment and ask and i'll get back to you and i'll tell you what i can and what i know and um, but that's everything but that's everything that i can say we know we might know more we don't know i've just rushed through this video because i wanted to get it done and out there so yeah guys Thanks for watching the video. I hope that it's cleared up maybe some of the questions some of you guys have about what's going on with 1.8. Um, I'm really excited about the Rogue uh, 2.0. I hope a lot of you guys are too. It's going to completely change the Dark Zone. I can't wait for it. Um, please tell me how you feel about it, whether you're excited about it or whether you feel it's going to you know, ruin the Dark Zone. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, man, hit subscribe, give us a like, let us know how you feel. And as always, man, we will catch you next time on The True Show.